Welcome back to the channel and in today's video we're going to be talking about the upcoming plans for the farm over the next six months. Now earlier on this morning I've been on the farm and it has not stopped raining. I've just got a cup of hot chocolate here and I've come back in this afternoon into the Ollie's Farm office to have a chat with you guys about the plans for the farm over the next six months. That is some really good hot chocolate. And it's really quite interesting because the equipment which we want to purchase has got to give a return on our investment. So everything I buy, everything we go for, needs to have a purpose, i.e. the muck spreader, the bale wrapper, silage equipment for example, so we have to have a plan. Now the other day when Ernest Doe dropped the buckets off, the scrap buckets which we were going to otherwise scrap, uh, Henry from Ernest Doe actually got in touch with me. He said, Ollie, you've got a green and yellow tractor on your channel, you've had green and yellow for so long, would you like to try your first New Holland? So I said to him, we'll try New Holland. Now we've got the muck spreading coming up in the next couple of weeks, so whether I can put the T7, it's a T7225 I believe, or 245, I'm not too sure which model we're getting yet, um, but it's coming in the next couple of weeks, so I know there's a lot of New Holland blue boys out there, and I'm quite excited to drive it actually, because I've never really driven any of the new New Holland range uh, tractors, so I'm gonna be excited to try one of those, and I know a lot of John Deere fans out there are gonna be a bit worried about this, but I do like to just try lots of different tractors and check out what's on the market. Because on a farm, you need to check out all of the different machinery options which are available to you. The reason being that if there's a machine which can do the same job for 10 to 20,000 pounds less, it's perhaps something worth looking at. But when you have a machine which is gonna depreciate more than another machine based on its depreciation, then that is a, an important factor to consider. So we've got the New Holland coming, we're gonna be having a look at that. Also in this upcoming week, tomorrow we've got Rip and Farm Services coming to the farm to come and pick up the spare front loader. As the first front loader, uh, we couldn't get to fit at Christmas because it had to have some separate springs ordered and they had to come in from Germany, so it took, to, it took a couple of days. And at the time, uh, we only had the front loader tractor so we didn't have a telehandler and I suppose that's one of the big drawbacks to having only one machine when you've got livestock on the farm is that you need both machines in order to be able to feed every day and if you can't feed the cattle that's a big problem because the cattle are going to go hungry so I'll be happy to get that loaded tomorrow and see that going back we've also got the boiler tomorrow to load and there's a big job in the shed basically stacked itself at the top and there's like a chip mountain and it's been taken off, so there's a sheer edge. So I've got to be very careful about how we get that chip out of the biomass store. A lot of you guys have been asking about a biomass video, and I have previously done a biomass video, but it was with the old JCB. It was uh, a, year, a few years ago now, and it was only actually today that I was looking that I was looking over, over the channel, and I realised that we've actually been going now for uh, coming up to just over five years. Uh, so there's a five year Ollie's Farm anniversary party coming up and that's going to be a celebration for five years of Ollie's Farm in 2016, which feels like that. It feels like it was yesterday. I can't believe how quickly the time's gone. And it just goes to show that, um, you know, in this life, things happen so quickly. And especially when you're working all the time and you're on the go, time just flies. So do what you love, do what you enjoy. One of the biggest factors of Ollie's Farm and, about the, ch and, uh, and the channel is it's to inspire you guys out there. So it's to inspire you to do something, to change your life and to go out into the world and leave a mark on it. And that's exactly what I try to do with Ollie's Farm and also have fun at the same time. But with Ollie's Farm, it is a lot of work and I love doing it, um, but I do need to slow down sometimes. But the thing is, there's so much to do, there's so much to be getting on with that I am high on life. So sometimes taking a day off, taking a break is very good to recharge and to regenerate. And something else which is happening later on in the week, this weekend, we've got an emergency delivery coming of silage bales. Because what's happened is that now that there's so many horses on the farm, and with the cattle and the horses, they're going through four to five silage bales a week now. We've gone through all of the hay, so that it's probably gonna go up to six to seven bales a week now of silage. Thank you for all of your comments on the straw bales yesterday. Uh, I really enjoyed filming yesterday's video, and I was really proud with how it came out. There was a lot of comments about and the mould on the bales, and uh, they are perhaps a bit too mucky to feed to the cows. Well, what we do is we take the crust off in the yard, and then we feed the cows the centre, the, the core, and that's what they eat. So they don't eat the wet crust on the outside. It's a bit like opening a Mars bar. You take off the wrapper before you eat the Mars bar, and that's what we've been doing for many years. 
Something which would be quite nice to do maybe this year is to perhaps look at wrapping some straw bales or trying to find a shed which they could be stored in and we could store maybe 200 bales to keep them drier so that when we, have, when we feed them out we don't have to take the crust off, they could have the whole bale. So this weekend we've got a load of silage coming to the farm and there's a little bit of a problem because we don't know how we're going to unload the bales without piercing the film. So I'm hoping that Cherry Products can deliver our new bale grab in time for this weekend because if they can't I'll have to try and use the pallet forks which could mean splitting the bales and I really don't want to do that because then that would be a wasted group of bales. So if, if Cherry can really pull out the stops and get that bale grab delivered for this weekend I would be so thankful and we can get those emergency silage bales unloaded and fed to the horses and to the cattle. And something to consider for later on this year is we're going to have to uh, check how much silage we're making and try and make a bit more for next year because we seem to be going a through a lot at the moment because of the amount of horses and cattle on the farm. And then once all of those jobs have de been done we've still got to collect the rest of the bales on the farm. There's still the top field which has got uh, straw bales on it. We've got to pick those ones up, bring them back to the farm, get them all fed out and then we can put the cattle float box back onto the trailer and then we can transport the cattle out to the Broads National Park and then once they've been taken out to the Broads National Park, we've then got the land work to do. So we need to prepare the land for the spring barley. So Dad doesn't want to do the ploughing or the drilling or anything like that. He doesn't want to do the machinery. So Geoffrey, who is from next door, does the ploughing and he does the drilling. And he's going to uh, come in to plough the field. And then, and then I'm going to work it down with a Pottinger Synchro, very similar to what we did last year. And then it's going to be drilled with Geoffrey's Combi Amazon drill. And then we're going to roll it in with a set of Vadastad rollers. And I've got a bit of a problem with the rollers at the moment because they're in the shed and because they've been sitting for such a long time and they're on their original tyres, one of the tyres has cracked and now popped. So I've got to find a new tyre or a pair of new tyres for that set of rollers. And luckily I was speaking to a dealership the other day and I'm going to be able to buy a pair of small uh, trellisable tyres for the rollers. So they've got to be fitted and installed and then we can use the rollers. But that job has to be done before we do the rolling, so that's very important. And then once the rolling's been done, there's a large agricultural cooperative company in this area who own a significant amount of Agrifax sprayers, who specialise mainly in spraying herbicides, pesticides and fungicides. They, they specialise in programmes, it's all they do. They come onto the farm and they apply the herbicides and fungicides and the nitrogen and pesticides. So they do a really good job of that. They've got spraying operators who just do that all day, day in, day out. They know the machines inside and out. They are very, very good people at Frontier. They're a very good team and they really know what they're doing. So they do the spraying. And then Geoffrey harvests the barley with what is now, I suppose, a, a, a kind of modern classic uh, class lection. And then once that's harvested, the straw softs will then be picked up and baled. And this is quite an interesting debate at the moment because we're thinking about potentially buying a muck spreader later on this year and it could potentially be a round baler instead. So leave a comment in this comment section down below of what you think the next piece of equipment should be. Do you think it should be a muck spreader or do you think it should be a round baler which would mean we could bale our silage, we could bale the straw bales, we could bale the hay as well. That would be a really good piece of equipment to buy and there's a machinery company who's gotten in touch with me who I think we could really do something quite fun together in order for myself and in order for Ollie's farm to be able to buy a round baler. And there's also the potential the opportunity for a mower, uh, which is really exciting. So be prepared for some mowing and silage content this summer, uh, which I'm really looking forward to. So leave a comment in the comment section down below muck spreader or baler. Which one do you think is more important for the farm at the moment? And then once everything's been done, once all of the bales have been collected, the muck's been spread, the cattle have been taken out, the crops have been drilled, we'll then have some time to earn some extra money on other farms doing contracting, providing services for other farmers, whether it be material cartings such as bales, muck, grain, wood chip, which is now becoming popular in this area. There's lots of opportunities. You've just got to go out there and find them. Farming is an ever-changing industry. It's very important at the moment. So there's never been a better time to be in farming, even though it is changing and farms are getting bigger. I do believe in this country, there are some opportunities to be specialist, to be niche, find your niche, find your market and stick with it and do it really well. So stay tuned for plenty of content coming up this week. Lots to look forward to. Hopefully Cherry Attachments will get the bale grab here for Saturday. Will they do it? Will Mr Cherry, Mr Graham Cherry, be able to get the attachments here or not? I don't know, but I really hope that we can get them here uh, because the game is on. It's got to be done. I've now got to go and make a lot of phone calls. And guys, remember, we're in it to win it. Thank you very much for watching today's video and I will catch you on the next one.